I'm standing on Culp's Hill at Gettysburg in front of the monument to the 78th and 102nd New York. These are two regiments that fought side by side here at Gettysburg, but would later combined into a single regiment, the 102nd New York. On the monument behind me, you will see the names of the two men who commanded the regiment here at the Battle of Gettysburg. The first is James Crandall Lane, who was colonel. He was wounded early on the morning of July 3rd and turned over command to the captain of Company E, Captain Lewis R. Stegman. What this monument doesn't tell you is that two months earlier, at the Battle of Chancellorsville, these two men were at the center of a controversy that embroiled the regiment, so much so that the issue had to be taken all the way to the division commander, John White Geary. On the third day of the battle, as the Confederates were attacking toward the exposed right flank of the regiment, Lewis Stegman was seen walking away from the scene of danger, muttering to himself, it is stupid to be in this position. Colonel Lane writes Stegman up and accuses him of cowardice. There's just one problem. No one seems to know where James Lane was on May 3rd, 1863, either. In fact, Stegman later testified, along with several others, that Lane was nowhere to be found. This was also not the first time that Lane was accused of cowardice. When he was a major commanding the regiment at the Battle of Antietam, Lane was seen hiding behind rocks. Stegman, on the other hand, had just escaped from the hospital with a nasty head wound and walked into battle on September 17th with a bandage around his head. So, how serious was Lane's wound on July 3rd, 1863? We'll never know. Although both of these men survived the war, neither one of them left memoirs or a collection of letters from which we might learn a little bit more about the business going on between them. But it is obvious that there was a constant struggle between Lane and Stegman. Now, what do the differences between two officers in one small regiment in a massive army in a giant war have to do with the outcome of the American Civil War? Nothing at all, except this. Every regiment, every brigade, every division, every corps, and every army that you read about is made up of men, people with personal feelings about one another. So while it may be tempting to think of units as blocks of red and blue moving across a map, remember that these are units composed of people, people with opinions, people with feelings, and these opinions and feelings, as much as anything, dictate the course of history.